We here at iFixit love our gaming devices, and with Valentine's Day right around the corner, we couldn't be happier to spend it with you and our new Nintendo 3DS XL. While this is an attractive piece of hardware, it's the insides that count, right? So from us to you, we're spreading the love and tearing this new 3DS down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the Nintendo 3DS XL 2015. It's been a long time since we've had a handheld gaming device on our teardown table, and we haven't seen a 3DS since the original. Back then, the original scored a 5 out of 10 on our repairability meter. How does the new model stack up? Let's find out. The new version is slightly larger and thinner, coming in at 160 by 93.5 by 21.5 millimeters thick. And the new model is also slightly lighter, seven grams lighter in fact, weighing in at 329 grams. To get inside, we pop out the stylus and get to work on a few screws, and we get our first look under the hood. It doesn't reveal much, but we can see the battery and the micro SD card. That's right, you now need your screwdriver to remove the micro SD card, but once you get over that minor annoyance, both the battery and the micro SD card are very easy to remove. Speaking of the battery, looks like Nintendo stuck to their guns on this one. There's no upgrade on the battery from the 2012 3DS XL. This is a 3.7 volt battery rated at 6.5 watt hours. With the battery out, it was time to really dig into the 3DS XL. A total of eight screws, including two hidden underneath some rubber feet, were all it took to get the 3DS open and split into two. On our way to get the motherboard out, we were struck by some odd cable wrapping with the circle pad. The cable actually wraps itself over its own ZIF connector, hindering access to itself. Hmm. Setting the circle pad aside for now, we focus on getting the motherboard out. At this point, our trusty Phillips screwdrivers let us down as the motherboard is secured in place by JIS screws. We've seen these before, so we knew right where to find the right bit for these screws. Now that we have the motherboard out, we focus on the micro SDHC reader. Nintendo claims that the new 3DS XL will support micro SDHC cards up to 32 gigabytes, which is plenty of space for storing all those files and downloadable games. Now let's take a look at those chips. First up, we see the custom Nintendo CPU, most likely based on an ARM core, the four gigabytes of Samsung made NAND flash memory, and on the back, we find more goodies like the NXP infrared IC chip. Once we finished with the motherboard, we took a slight detour back to the circle pad. We were curious to see how they work, and we thought you might be too. We were entertained for hours. Just kidding, we still have a lot to uncover, including the game cartridge reader. We can't help but imagine this is a piece that might be extinct in a few years with the popularity of downloadable games and media. In order to get into the displays, we had to remove a large black frame that houses what appears to be the NFC antenna for the Amiibo figurines. The lower LCD came off with just our hands. No tools, no heat. Bravo, Nintendo. On to the upper display assembly. Fortunately, the display assembly was only mildly adhered to the frame, so getting it off wasn't terribly difficult. Unfortunately, its three cables were routed through the hinge and needed to be rolled up and pulled through, which is an especially easy way to damage them. It's our bet that these are the cables that control the parallax barrier that gives the 3DS XL its awesome glasses-less 3D effect. Basically, each eye sees different pixels. Using some face tracking cameras with a little geometry, the 3DS knows which pixels each eye can see and draws two overlapping versions of the same scene, one for each eye. The combination of the two versions gets slapped together in your brain as a 3D image. See, science is cool. Finally, we check out the camera bar. Nintendo crammed three cameras onto this little cable. The two front-facing cameras for watching your every move to give you the best 3D effect possible, and the rear-facing camera tracks AR cards and takes photos with apparently improved low-light capture. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The 3DS XL scored a five out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the battery is fairly easy to swap out by unscrewing two screws and removing the back cover. And screws and plastic clips are the primary fasteners. That means no adhesive. Also, no proprietary screws, only Phillips and JIS. But on the downside, the top display's cables are routed in such a way that it makes them quite frustrating to remove without ripping them off, and just as difficult to reset properly during device reassembly. 
There's a ton of little components inside the 3DS XL, which may potentially cause problems if you happen to lose one while performing a repair. The majority of connectors are zip, and it's difficult to ensure each one is connected properly without reassembling the whole thing and starting up the device. And finally, the headphone jack and charging connector are soldered to the motherboard, meaning you need to take out your soldering iron if you accidentally break them. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high-quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.